Right, it's time to do an unscripted video, talking heads video. My name is Ash, hopefully you're doing well. The decal should be available, as you've seen by the intro, by about midweek this week. I'll let you know when that happens. It'll be a coming couple of days, there'll be a YouTube post, a couple of Twitter posts, etc, etc. Regardless, it's time to chat about novel things and some ideas that I've been having in my brain and tossing around. Obviously, I've been streaming a little more uh, to force myself to actually try and get some content out on the channel because I haven't really been playing War Thunder a great deal. And any spare time I do have is dedicated to, you know, lifestyle or fixing up uh, the house or doing other housework as well as working a new job, which I've had for about a month and a half now. So that's all in, in hyperbolic focus, you know, right? I'm, you know, I'm trying to do the best I can and obviously make at least some form of content. But obviously, since the new patch has been rather lackluster, it's been rather crap, there hasn't been really much to cover outside of the copy-paste things and maybe going back on some rare event vehicles and talking about those. Well, that tree certainly hurt. Um, and the boys from the moderation team want me to talk about the squadron. So if you don't know, I have two squadrons, Banjo and B4 and J0. They're both bang another nuisance job out. Look that up in the squadron uh, tab. Essentially, these two squadrons are needing more players. So if you want to apply there, there is, uh, you know, you're going to come and join the Discord. But, you know, the boys wanted me to mention that. So we'll check that list off. What other housekeeping items do we have? Obviously, the decal will probably be available this week sometime, I hope. It's been a long time in the coming. It'll probably be just before the, uh, well, probably be about tomorrow, actually due to the changes and the upcoming event, which I guess is bringing in new players and bringing in some activity, I guess. If you want to unlock some event vehicles, and those are your options, I guess. But a lot of people that I know haven't been playing War Thunder as much. A lot of the other content creators and a lot of the other specific, you know, community members that are in my community, for example, have been just playing other games. They haven't really been doing a whole great deal, and that's kind of a bit concerning when it comes to War Thunder's uh, trajectory, at least in terms of what it provides for content. You know, I talked about this in, in uh, well, probably three videos now, but the past month has been a struggle, considering that most of the top-tier content's already been covered thanks to the new patch, and there hasn't been any consistency when it comes to, uh, you know, top-tier air, at least. So... You know, you're having Civil War Simulator when playing F-14s consistently. It's a bit of a, a nightmarish <laughs> realization that, well, the game doesn't really have much to offer unless you are grinding for a specific something or doing daily tasks or something like that. You know, back in the day, updates actually had competitive uh, vehicles that were put across the board. You know, comparing two updates, Advancing Storm and, and the new vehicles that basically, you know, had a relative level of parity between each other at the same time compare that to other updates you know which almost introduce a single new top level tier vehicle be it aircraft or tank by itself drumming up hypes and sales really hasn't been the most ideal f thing for gaussian entertainment to really do t t well this year not only does this result in a single nation spam that leads to a very long match queues for those actually wanting to play the new flavor of the month vehicle, but it sucks the enjoyment out of other nations' top-end tech as well as the whole game in its entirety. British Jet players, for example, have nothing new to grind this update. There's no reason to slot themselves in a game of F-14 Thunder and an FG-1 that is now completely outmatched. And vehicle variety and queue times for those factors that Gaussian claims to be such advocates for can only be harmed by this exact example. The way to solve the issue is to ensure new levels of vehicles are not only introduced one by one each update, but instead as groups to form a new plateau and capability and, well, new vehicle levels, which would expand the game's horizon and obviously make for a better gameplay experience for the players playing at the higher end tiers. The F-14 100% was just added due to the fact that Top Gun was out, and literally its only debut was because of that movie's existence. You know, the biggest hyped up sequel since, you know, the 80s. Oh, of course, you're going to capitalize on the hype with that particular meme machine. And I don't really care for much of top tier these days anyway. Playing it just feels like a chore. You know, you, you spend three minutes flying, only get shot in 30 seconds or get beyond visual range missiles and then it becomes a complete cat and mouse chase as you try and chase the remainder of your friendly team away from an aircraft you've critical hit earlier in the match with one of your missiles. So, I don't know. And unless you're playing a vehicle that is rare, overpowered, or 
somewhat flavour of the month, you're not exactly going to progress, you know. Good luck playing a King Tiger in the days where now you're getting spammed over by martyrs, BMPs, and, and all those kind of things, let alone, you know, early tier jets, like 7-0, 7-3 jets, man, that's rough, especially if you, you're a new player. Because all you've got is SU-11s and SU-9s and F-89Bs, just stuff like that, and that kind of battle rating, you know. Ah, uh, you know, I was having a good old discussion with, with, a, with a friend who'd come along to the live stream yesterday, who I hadn't talked to in a couple of years, and he's like, has War Thunder actually changed? And I couldn't give him a positive answer. I literally sat there going, well, you know, when was the last time we played together? Uh, for you know, prior to 2018, probably? W what's changed in the game since then? Well, we've got more top tier premiums. We've got more vehicles. There's more vehicles in the game. Do you like unlocking more vehicles? And that sort of dawned on me, you know, bomber cockpits haven't been fully implemented. Uh, the... Bombers haven't changed, their damage models haven't changed, they get basically, you know, you, you blink and they basically, you know, fall apart. They're useless in their realistic battles. You know, the only thing that really has changed is simulator battles, even then Gaijin Entertainment doesn't like sim, so... You know, it's a good question to ask yourself, you know, what has actually changed? Oh, we've got new missile sticks and some new, you know, new top tier jets that, that nobody's going to bother playing. <laughs> so, you know, go figure. You know, I've got something like 450-ish odd vehicles left to unlock, and that is a lot of vessels, but it's 95 coastal, ni about 95 uh, blue water. You know, there's 37 helicopters, and I think there's something like 220-odd-ish tanks that left for me to unlock. So, I mean, well, that is quite a lot. When you compare the game to, like, what, what is it, like 2,160 vehicles or something stupid? Yeah. This game has a lot of stuff to offer, and a lot of stuff that can't be balanced correctly. So, you know, you can't fault Gaja Entertainment for being a little bit messy when it comes to their algorithmic way of... You know, doing balance. For those of you who don't know, they actively balance this game via an algorithm. That's how they determine the battle rankings. That's how they determine the repair costs. And if data values don't change for a vehicle in a given month or given couple of months, they don't change the data values for the actual vehicle. So they might have over-tiered a vehicle, for, for, for example. Uh, and unfortunately, that means that that vehicle is probably never going to change. So, you know, we've got that to look forward to. Otherwise, there is an event vehicle uh, or event stuff coming on. You'll see reviews of those coming up shortly, provided that content creators actually get test drives for them. You might get them mid next week. Uh, it's also my birthday this week too, so we're going to celebrate that and have a little more positive fun as I've been reflecting on the past 10 years of War Thunder. Now we've also got November sales where it's War Thunder's 10th anniversary as well. We've got, there's a heap of positive things to look forward to and a heap of not so positive things to look forward to as well. So. You know what, guys? I'm going to end it there. Thanks for listening to me ramble and rant. I don't, I don't often really get the chance to sort of vent like this. And uh, I know I go on about varied topics. I could go off on a tangent about a thousand things, but you know, I don't mean for this video to be negative. It's not negative. It's just a self-reflection uh, in a way. All right. Thank you very much for watching. Make sure you join the squadron if you haven't joined the squadron. Um, apply via the Discord, or I don't know. But buy something with a 3% discount link that I have in the description down below. That'll, that'll help me uh, greatly. Cheers. Bye-bye.